Hello there, welcome back to the channel. This is Blurbox. And that's the toilet in the background going. Sorry. OpenAI released Sora AI a couple of weeks ago and they showed some footage of what Sora can do and it looks incredible. Everyone's seen it, you know, the spaceman and there's like puppies and stuff. It looks ridiculous. So today I'm going to give you my thoughts and speculations on how this is going to affect the animation industry because I am pooping my pants a little bit. Let's do it. So when they released those Sora AI images or those videos, my first thought was, oh no, my job's going to be gone by tomorrow. And it wasn't. So my first prediction was completely wrong. I'm just going to take you back to another project that OpenAI did. And that is the Dali thing where you can give AI some prompts and it will produce a picture based on your prompts. Now, when that came out a few years ago, it looked like rubbish. It looked really rubbish. And <laughs> I remember going to work that day, showing my friend, a colleague of mine, and being like, look at this, look how rubbish this is. Like stuff like hands had like 9,000 fingers and there was like extra arms and like torsos were twisted around and they looked terrible. And I remember thinking, okay, okay, we're okay. Don't worry about it guys, we're good. And then the next update of Dali, uh, the art it was pumping out wasn't just twice as good or three times as good. It was like a thousand times better, literally, than what it was producing the year before. And that's when I went, oh no, okay. Because if this is a thousand times better than it was last year, it's gonna be a million times better next year. And guess what? It kind of was. And then that million times better thing came in the form of Sora AI. Sick, live action looking film content that you can just type in and then it will just poof. It will just appear. And that's when they started getting bummed out a little bit. Animation jobs are gonna go, character design jobs are gonna go, um, junior animation positions are gonna go at the very least, and there's gonna be nothing left. There's gonna be a guy in a office room, just in a tie, a little like tie thing with a suit, just like, just typing stuff out and then animation appearing. That was my first gut reaction. And probably everyone else's. So then I started thinking about 2D animation, the industry, in what it was 20 years ago before digital animation came in. When digital animation came in, it eliminated quite a few departments. Uh, Peyton Inc. There was no cleanup, cleanup department anymore. Um, there was no, you know, painted backgrounds, no key animation anymore. There was no in-betweeners. It was just animators doing animation. And that led to an explosion in the amount of work that could be done. A digital animator, I read somewhere that a digital animator could do, can do, like something like 10 times the amount of work a traditional animator could do 20 years ago. So that just meant more work was being produced and that just meant more cartoons were greenlit and it meant like a flood of animation content. Just the last 10 years has been crazy, just cartoons after cartoon. Now that meant that there were more jobs and I was lucky because I graduated college when this animation surge started happening all off the back of uh, digital animation. Now I can see AI being used as a cost-cutting measure to produce animation within your cartoon you're making. So let's say you could have um, AI being used to, you know, write a prompt and AI will produce an animation, let's say a walk cycle, an angry walk cycle. You still need an animator to go in and pick through it and make it as polished as possible. Even now, as we speak, and this has been going on for years in animation, computers do a lot of work. For example, right now, I am, a couple of weeks ago, I started on a new Disney TV production. For the first few weeks, we are just doing walk cycles and different reactions and different poses that we can reuse later on down the production line to save us a lot of time. And it's useful, it is useful. You know, sometimes you don't want to do walks. It's a, it's a Wednesday morning, you don't want to do a walk. Oh, look, there's a walk over there I did months ago. I'll just use that and you throw it in and then you can reuse it again and again infinitely. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that computers already cut out a lot of the labor of animation. And look at mocap. Mocap's been around for years. It's standard in film production, in special effects and animation, and it didn't lead to a decrease in animation work. In fact, you need an animator to go in and polish up and clean up and pick through animation to make it as good as possible. Because there are limitations to mocap as there are with AI animation in Sora. Now the next point I want to bring up is the fact that whenever I see a piece of art produced by AI, it's really not that impressive. The fact that I know that a computer has done that isn't really that you know magical and that's the thing about art. Art is kind of a magic thing. The fact that you see an amazing piece of art, you know I look at Aladdin, when I watch Aladdin I'm like what people drew 
all these frames and all they are is just doodles on a piece of paper and the fact that I care about these characters and that a human has done this is amazing that's amazing to me and I think it applies to everyone who watches animation not just animation art in general the fact that a human can do that is amazing. It's way more impressive that a human can create an animated piece of art as opposed to some computer on Google. Now, my next point is going to be about animation studios, and I'm talking about the big ones. Let's say Disney, DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. The heart of these animation studios is animators and artists, and you, I can't see a world where Disney is going to get rid of human people who create art for the sake of a bit of money. I can see them using AI to streamline the process and make things easier, but the complete, el uh, the complete elimination of artists and people, I, uh, I just can't see it. I don't know, maybe I'm being a bit too positive but it's all I have. <laughs> Now we have gone through something similar to this when photography was invented. Visual artists back then, excuse me, my cat is making a bunch of noise. Visual artists back then were terrified that photography was going to eliminate the need for visual artists. You know, people who painted landscapes and real life paintings, portraits, that kind of stuff. What it did really was evolve art into something a bit more experimental, something a bit more exploratory. Artists changed the way they painted things. It didn't lead to the decrease of people wanting art. What's more amazing, someone taking a nice picture of a landscape or someone painting a landscape. This isn't me pooping all over photography. I love photography. I take pictures myself. There's some amazing photographic artists out there, but the point I'm making is that people still want art created by artists. Moving on to my next point. When you ask ChatGPT something, it looks at algorithms on the internet and it pulls information that's already available, stuff that's already there, and it spits it out in a way that we can understand. The same thing happens in Dali and Sora. Basically, the AI models are going in and pulling out visual information that is already out there on the internet. Now, this is a bit of a stretch. I'm getting outside my scope of smart people talk, but basically, it's taking art that already exists. And what that does is it gives us the opportunity to create new things, which is good because I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of a Disney remake every year. It's getting on me nerves a little bit. I'm a swore. And it's time to create new things. Let's go. So theoretically, if AI is pulling all this visual information from the internet and spitting it out in an image or film or animation, then hopefully it will force the hand for executives to create new things. I'm really, I know I'm really, really pushing it here. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling soon, I swear, but just one last thing. Included in the Sora AI footage, there was some animation. So what I would like to do is just go over it really briefly and just show the limitations of it thus far. It's not all bad, but there is some interesting stuff in there. Here he is. <laughs> Okay, I get that this is just a text prompt and it spit out this kind of decent um, animation. It's not bad. There's some stuff like, there's some weird stuff going on with the uh, with the right leg. If you look at his, his tail and his screen right leg, it sort of morphs. If you slow it down, the, the tail and the leg kind of morph together. And there's some strange stuff going on with the, the fabric physics and physics in uh, like cloth physics in CG animation has been a staple for a decade now. So, I mean, there's nothing new there. I can see where AI will be useful for background crowd shots because those guys in the background actually look pretty good. I mean, they're just, in terms of just like TV production, that's, that's fine. But overall, you know, there's not many arcs. It's a bit flat and unpolished. Now, I totally get that someone just wrote some text and it came up with this. On a superficial level, that's pretty amazing. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing for like five seconds. But my main complaint is that you can just tell that that is exactly what happened. Um, there's not much life to it. That's my biggest problem. The fact that I know this is AI isn't that impressive. But when Sora 2.0 comes out next year and it is absolutely perfect, possibly, I will happily eat my words. Maybe not happily, maybe begrudgingly eat my words, but, but I'm ready to be proven wrong. Okay, this kangaroo is annoying me. Get off my screen! Okay, so I think I'm done my rambling. Uh, sorry if you listened to the whole thing. If you didn't and you skipped through it, congratulations, you had the right idea. Um, I think in short, like, hold on, I have some notes here. I even took notes for this one. Um, I'm just gonna close this out now. Text prompt AI images came at a bad time. You know, the economy's down, 
inflation's up and as a result jobs start kind of going creative jobs unfortunately uh, some of the first to go when that happens and it's not just animation that these jobs are disappearing from it's also game development jobs are just down across the board as animators and artists in any field we just have to be resilient be creative and things will turn around and by creative i mean come up with new ideas to create different bits of art or be creative in the way you're going to make money you know uh okay i know i'm a bit too positive about this we will get through this um in the meantime thank you for watching i hope i didn't put you off with my ramblings and babble but i'm just letting you guys know what i think um i have a patreon if you want to join that that'd be great like and subscribe and share this and also leave a comment below if you think i'm wrong or i'm missing something or you have a different idea and yeah anyways thank you very much bye bye